Luke Solomon. Barnet resident, hair enthusiast, and all around lovely bloke. This is my friend Derek Carter. He once rescued me from a toilet. From that point on, we then discovered that we like, you know, unusual music, things that not everyone likes. I think we were drunk, <laughs> and that's where it started. It wasn't like we had this real crazy plan for domination or anything like that. Luke had worked at labels before, and I'd had my own label, and Luke as well. And so we just like kind of brought our collective knowledge and started thinking about it. You know, this could be something really cool. It was the whole thing that born out of what Derek was saying was just us being like either hung over from the night before, just being idiots. I mean, we partied a lot really then and uh, suddenly the music sort of started to happen and the things we had, Matthew Herbert record and DJ Sneak record and Chris Nazuka record and then all of a sudden we s there was s something happening that we both felt was quite exciting. You know, we were excited by it. It wasn't like I want to put out a DJ Sneak record and I want to put out, like, like we had a laundry list or anything like that. Never. It was people we knew and hung out with and associated with. Like, Matthew used to come down to Bar Rumba and when Luke and Kenny were doing space parties there on Wednesday. That was a real melting pot. And that, that like, stuff. helped a lot. It was a real testing ground for, for both of us, you know, like, first time I heard You Can't Hide From Your Bug was in that club. And that was one of those records, which you get quite rarely now, I think, where you suddenly, and you hear it out and you see what it does to people and it just, destroyed people it was that was a really exciting time that i think that was the point when everything suddenly were like right okay this is this could be a proper record label i guess we just did what felt good and natural and like having that kind of positive reinforcement allowed us to do it again and then do it again and then do it again so like you know you keep putting out these records and then there's never been a time when we've put a record out for the sake of thinking that it will sell we've never done that we, we will always do something and the chances are it'll probably sell 400 copies, but we'll be both be happy. You but know. we'd like it. Yeah. As a body of work, the classic catalog is excellent. And I, I would say that, fuck what you heard, like pardon my French, but it's excellent. It covers a lot of spectrum. It just goes across. There's latitude, there's, you know, emotions, there's, dance floor, destruction, there's, you know, quiet, introspective moments. There's a lot, a lot, a lot. As we were ending classic, like the music industry started to shift. And I think it was our fault that house music got lost. Because <laughs> we went there to soldier on and keep it moving. Classic was always very much a family thing. It's always been a family thing. We communicate with our artists, they're our friends, we hang out with them, and their music is very personal to us and want it to be treated right. And, and I think the time's come back round again. I think house music is quite relevant, or very relevant again, within the dance music world. And I think that it's a good, it felt like the moons were in the right place for both of us. It's, you know, got a purpose, it's got a meaning, it's got a mission, and Classic is, is ready to get in there and mix it up. Definitely. Yeah.